Hey y'all, it's Asha Bookadrum and I am back with a, another video. There's so much crud on this floor, but at this point I just don't care <laughs> at all. So, looking at the title of this video, you can probably guess what this is about. I never officially said that I was going to do this video. I know that I did something similar to this in December of last year where I did a check-in and I talked a little bit about what performative activism was looking like in the booktube community. Now that we are over a year later from when the world itself was at a standstill because of the murder of George Floyd, I kind of wanted to do a, another <laughs> check-in like a year check-in and I don't think that this is going to be something that I'm going to do quite often I just think that it's fascinating I don't want to say it's a phenomenon but low-key it is kind of a phenomenon for me watching kind of the evolution of the booktube community from the stands that people were taking last year or last summer to now you know we're in November of this year we're actually almost a year and a half is it a year and a half am I doing my math right yeah almost a year and a half later and what has that meant for BIPOC creators what has that meant specifically for black creators and what are we doing and what are we not doing and I don't really have all of the answers I never have all of the answers whenever I do these discussions it really is just kind of a way for me to work my thoughts out kind of an opportunity for me to express how I feel while also gauging how the community feels. So as I always say with every video, feel free to disagree with me. There's going to be aspects of this that I just feel like the actual proof is in the pudding so I don't know how much wiggle room there is for a lot of debate on some of this stuff but I definitely want this to be a space where people can express their p opinions in a respectful way especially when we are talking about uh, tough topics like uh, race especially as it aligns itself with the book community so uh, just kind of rehashing what we were seeing last year last summer was that the world itself was at a standstill with the murder of George Floyd and I believe that almost every community was kind of at a standstill where black creators were basically saying that they were not often seen they weren't given the same respect they were not valued as much as as their other counterparts and I'm specifically saying black creators here because it's very important in light of what happened last year to differentiate between black creators and other BIPOC creators I think that a lot of like people of color BIPOC people have gone through a lot within the last year I mean a heck of a lot I can speak of a, a, quite a few incidents that have happened to other communities of color however I cannot speak for anyone's experience but my own and the reason why I specifically say that is because I think that there are more important voices to listen to when it comes to an experience that I have not seen or felt with my own mind body and soul I guess it's the best way to put it but I'm specifically going to be talking about the role and the way that booktube as a whole has been responding or not responding to black creators and when I use the term woke woke is a very interesting word I'm not going to get into the history of the word woke because I feel like there's a lot of intricacy there and I don't really have the time to kind of delve into where the term has come from I think that it has now become a term that it's been weaponized and it's not always uh, a great term when it is bestowed upon someone but I think it is one that in at first had different meaning so when I say is booktube still woke what I mean is is Big booktube still actively making the same leaps and bounds and jumps that they were making in the summer of 2020 my first answer off of gut instinct and how I operate it's going to be no I felt the same way in December of last year and I was wondering if maybe you know things would change within the next six months and unfortunately I don't a hundred percent necessarily feel that way and the reason why I say that is because it's easy to go back to your regularly scheduled program as 
usual when you dive into something as heavy as race the black experience here in america when you dive into that head first too quickly and you don't give yourself enough time to educate yourself to truly truly learn and to give yourself some grace it's like trying to start a new hobby and you obsess over it and you burn out in two weeks and a lot of what i think I'm seeing is because I don't know everyone in the booktube community personally I can't sit here and say well this person is maliciously or intently or has the intention to not continue to do the work that needs to be done doesn't want to continue to have the discussions that need to be had I can't say that because I don't know people now there are people out there in the community who have put themselves on full display and they have engaged in performative activism and they have been called out and you know they've made whatever decisions they've wanted to make but for some people you can't really say what their thought process is if they're not speaking on it at all you can't say what's going through their mind I think for me I think that burnout is real I think that having discussions about race specifically the black experience here in the United States is super important however I do acknowledge that that's a tough topic and if you're not careful it's an easy topic to burn out on however I think that it kind of can make black creators or black people in the community feel as though it was a trend and even now in 2021 coming up at the end of the year I think that you know there are a lot of conversations happening in a lot of different places where this this urge to stand with black people was trending in 2020 and now 2021 it has kind of gone out the window and we don't really care anymore because we've moved on to the next thing and if y'all know me if you know anything that I do on this channel like I don't ever work in absolute so I'm not gonna sit here and say oh the whole community is still you know <laughs> the whole community is still doing this or doing it. I don't believe in that but I do believe that as as a, a great portion of this community has kind of moved on and it was what it was in 2020 and as with most issues as the book community kind of function is we we harp on something because it's popular there's a fear of getting canceled and then when the kind of like surge of having those discussions kind of dies down then we go back to doing what we were doing before i i don't know what my hopes are or what i would like to see happen because you know you want people to do things because they genuinely want to do things you don't want to force people into into doing things that they don't want to do and the reason why I say that is because you don't want to have people engage in performative activism you don't want people to feel like they're obligated you want people to want to do things because they're genuinely interested they really truly have their hearts set on changing the environment that we live in and I think as a black creator sometimes it's kind of hard because you want things to be different but deep down you know that sometimes things are just not going to change because it's just not what's hot right now and it's it's crazy because then you turn around and you say well my life is not a damn trend so you know it's just it just amazes me I think that it was just like a lot of hype surrounding like supporting black creators which was a complete failure you know I take responsibility for whenever my channel doesn't perform the way that I want it to perform because of the fact that I have not been consistent the way I've needed to be consistent and I have not done what I've am supposed to do in order to make sure that I keep the channel up but I think for some creators they have seen a huge decline in 
the way that people were subscribing to them and now a year and a half later no longer watch their content you know so you have some channels that were essentially kind of killed uh, because of that and it's really unfortunate because there are a lot of black booktubers out there that I think are doing some amazing things and you know I still don't feel like they get as much shine as they should get or they don't get as much respect as they should get and I think that that it's it's not popular to you know engage in social activism a lot in this community I think it's all about what looks good what looks pretty it's all visual which I get it you know this is a visual platform people are watching you but I also feel like content like the meat of what you're telling people should have some significance but everybody doesn't necessarily feel that way there are some people who feel as though you know I just want to relax and I, I don't want to think about this and that I just want to feel good and enjoy watching someone's content and I think maybe I just kind of work in a different mindset where like whenever I do watch people like I want to gain something from it I want to learn I'm a lifelong learner so my perspective of this is is going to be a little bit different I you know don't want to sit down and just watch fluff um, I mean, I have my moments, but that's not what I'm looking for in, in content creators. And there are great allies in this community, people who have kept up and, and, you know, highlighting black creators, highlighting books by black authors with black characters. There are some great individuals who are doing those things. I just still feel like at the end of the day, they just don't get the respect that they deserve to be quite honest with you. And I think that this goes with any BIPOC group where, you know, there are individuals out there that push, I mean, push and push and push to make sure that they're highlighting diverse creators, highlighting diverse books with diverse characters. And it's like, <laughs> It just it just blows my mind that it's it's just like those are not the things that are that are popular but a year ago when you know it was like the world for the first time saw a black man get murdered by the police which that was not the first time um it, it definitely not the first time it was just the first time that the world had no choice but to acknowledge that it happened so to see kind of the attitudes and the energy that occurred last year and now shifting into this year and, you know, going into 2022, it's kind of like it was a moment in time in which we decided that we were going to stand with this group. And now that that moment has passed, we're on to the next. And I think that a lot of BIPOC groups in this community get treated that way. We are but moments in time to some people, not everybody, but to some people, we are but moments in time. And it's a way to virtual sick, virtual virtue signal I don't know why I couldn't get that out it was a way for it's a way for people to virtue signal to let everyone know that they're doing the right thing they're sitting with the right groups and as soon as that passes by like who cares at that point and it's super unfortunate it, it really is I think that I being who I am now being 30 I think that I'm more content and just not even really asking people to do certain things anymore not ex not having expectations for people to continuously educate themselves i think that you know i think that fiction is a great educator i also think that nonfiction is a great edu is 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 an amazing <laughs> not fiction books are a great um point to educate yourself but we still have some kind of like hiccups a little bit about reading nonfiction, and i get it like i wasn't always a nonfiction reader either but i I don't know if people are like still actively trying to learn as much as they can and that's the thing that I think bothers me a little bit that I'm not saying that it needs to be a process where you are stressed out you're overwhelmed or you're just so extremely uncomfortable that it stresses you out or it makes you anxious but the only way to build empathy and this is why I always say this even from my perspective of a librarian I think the most important way to build empathy is to expose yourself to someone else's experiences and take a minute and walk in someone else's shoes and those experiences just may not always be 
the best experiences. They may be uncomfortable. They may stir you up and it's okay to take a break from that and kind of move on to something else. But I just feel like in order to kind of change the culture that we're in, in order to change the world that we're in, we are constantly asking people to have empathy, to see from someone else's perspective. You've got to be willing to engage in the material that gives you that different perspective. And I can't say that that is a trend that is still happening right now to this day in the book community. And it's, it's not that people aren't doing it, but I don't feel like the mass, the masses are doing it. This community is small in the grand scheme of YouTube, but it's also a large community as well. And I'm not here to police people's reading. I can't tell you what to read and what not to read. Y'all know how I kind of feel about that. But it, it it's hard for me to not want to say sometimes, and it's not my place, but it's human nature. I'm like, you know, try to learn about someone else's experience. What do you really know specifically about the black experience outside of you know, general things related to slavery and civil rights movement. What else do you know? What else are you interested in learning? And I I think that there are books that are, are great for that, fiction books as well. But I just, I, <laughs> I don't know. And like I always say, like, I just, I don't have all of the answers. I don't have all the answers and I, I can't be foolish enough anymore to have expectations of anyone outside of myself. I can only hold myself accountable, but I think from, you know, the inside looking out, it it is sad. It's sad to keep coming back to this topic. And I know some people are going to be like, Ashley, we've talked about this so many times. You keep talking about the same thing over and over. I feel like that's the only way that sometimes change happens is when you keep talking about something over and over and over and over again until it finally clicks with everyone. Like maybe one day it'll click like, okay, maybe I should be more considerate of other people's experiences and I should have an, a, a willingness, a willingness to learn more not because someone is telling me that I have to not because I feel like I'm going to get canceled not because I feel like I need a virtue signal but because it is the right thing to do it is the way to build empathy books are the gateway to empathy and the only way that you have that is if you walk into someone else's experiences so for me you know I think that there's this huge thing about book two was trying to be woke and, and aware in 2020 and that same energy and vibe about being woke and aware and and fully immersed into what the black experience was like is not the same energy that's being held in 2021 and I'm sure there are other racial and ethnic groups who can say the same thing where you know specifically you know something has happened in the world and people have acknowledged it and all of a sudden it's here goes some books by x y and z type of of you know authors and we're going to support them and then six months later it's like everyone falls off the face of the earth i think we've got to stop treating each other and i and like i said i can't speak for anybody but the black experience and then again i can't speak for every black person we've got to stop treating each other like trends a human life is not a trend a human life is is a gift it's valuable it's irreplaceable and you know to to treat it as if it's something to make us look good I think it just it never ceases to really like dig at my core that these are people, these, these, these humans meant something to someone else. They are valuable individuals. Their experiences are, are valuable fabrics of our global society. And yet we treat them like a trend because it's something to do in the moment. And when the trend is over and we've hopped onto something else, we forget about them. And that's why I can't sit here and say that we have kept the same energy. We have the same investment and interest in black creators and black authors and in and, and black stories and not just trauma stories, but black joy, black incidental stories where we just see black people doing normal things. That energy is not there anymore. 
and it's unfortunate and I don't think that energy is ever going to be there again until something horrific happens and it's so sad that any racial or ethnic group or any marginalized community has to go through trauma in order to be valued people's lives are beyond their trauma and we've got to stop treating them as if they are nothing more than their trauma and that they only deserve to be appreciated and recognized and then uplifted and and their voice is heard when it's trauma <laughs> like it's not that's not okay that's not good and and i can say that the black community in this community this subgroup of the black community has been treated like that for years since before 2020 that's why I had no faith in what was happening in 2020. That's why I told people don't subscribe to my channel because you feel sorry for me. Because I'm going to still be doing content that I want to do, how I want to do it, when I want to do it. Because that's just me. I don't need your sympathy subscription. I don't need you to feel like, oh, I feel bad for however I may have moved in the past or how I'm moving now. So I'm going to click this up. I, I didn't want, I didn't want the pity. I didn't want the 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 sympathy at all i just wanted people to take time to educate themselves and it's even more sad because i feel like you know we could take a survey and ask like how many of you have taken a you know just a little bit of time to educate yourself about the black experience in the past like five or six months people are going to be like yeah you know i just kind of haven't had the time or somebody did something for black history month and then outside of black history month like that's it and you know while i do appreciate this is even another thing while i do appreciate highlighting specific months like you know november is native american heritage month it is not the only month in which you should be reading books by native american and or indigenous authors that it's not black history month is not the only month in which you should be reading books by black um authors you know, September 15th, October 15th is not the only time frame in which you should be reading books by the Latinx community. June is not the only month in which you should be reading books about pride. March is not the only month in which you should be reading books by women. It's just stop boxing yourself into a month and, and that is a month in which you're dedicated to learning about this this individual's experience. I just I I think that part of me and what I have a difficulty in grasping is how could you not want to know about someone else's experience? I am a part of a marginalized community. I am a part of several marginalized communities because of intersectionality. And with that being said, I still don't have all the answers. I still don't know it all. I cannot speak for all groups, even the groups that I am a part of. I can never know what it's like to be a native or indigenous writer, author, creator, human being. I don't know what that experience is like. So I'm going to read those books. I'm going to engage in that content. I'm going to listen to those voices all of the time, not just in November. Not just when it's convenient for me because it's the thing to do because it's the month. I'm not going to just read books by Asian authors, Pacific Islander authors, or listening to those creators and engaging in that content during May because it's the month to do it. I do not identify as, as any of those categories. Yet, I think that it's my responsibility to know what it's like from so many different perspectives. What is it like to identify as Korean American? What is it like to identify as Vietnamese American? What is it like to identify as someone that's Chinese? Like, what is that experience like? What is the difference between being Chinese and Chinese American? What is it like growing up here and not being Asian enough, but also not being white enough? How does that experience pan out? What does that feel like? What type of things do those community members go through? I would never know that if I didn't take a chance and an opportunity to step out the confines of my own home of comfort. But until we do that, I can never I can never say that this community will ever be quote unquote woke, which I don't even like using the term anymore, to be quite honest with you. I really don't. But I want so much. 
for this community, for people who were so well read and so brilliant. I feel like sometimes socially we fail so much because we're hyper focused on the wrong things, the aesthetics, you know, how many books do I have? My bookshelves look good. And it's like, I just wish that it was just kind of different. I wish it wasn't, that wasn't the focus. I wish that that wasn't the end goal. I wish that our platforms were places where we could teach people who are not readers like us that, you know, pick up a book. It's, it's a way to learn. It's a way to see someone else's experience. I just feel like if more people engaged in books and really understood other people's experiences, the world would be so much better. It would be such a better place, but I don't know. I don't know how to fix it. I don't know how I don't I don't know how to change it. I don't have all the answers, but it's something that I'm so passionate about because I want kids like my kid to be able to grow up and see not only just herself and her world, but everyone else's world as well. That way, when she sees a kid that's from a different country or a different racial background or a kid with a disability or, you know, a, a kid that, I don't know, <laughs> speaks a different language, practices a different religion, she has the ability to be empathetic and understand that our differences are what makes this world so beautiful and not something that should be tearing us apart and dividing us. And she's learning that through books. And I wish that it was the same energy that I could just give to this community or that this community could give to each other. But I just think that I have stopped holding out hope for that because I don't think that it's ever really going to happen because sometimes people can be inherently selfish and you know humans are selfish I'm a selfish person I have selfish aspects about me that I'm more than willing to acknowledge so you know if we know that the views come from you know things being aesthetically appealing and and things you know like having large book halls and you know having certain looking bookshelves and you know having a certain brand is what sells people are gonna go for that <laughs> not videos that are highlighting you know diverse things or diverse creators or whatever so I think I've just kind of come to accept that and I'm not gonna lie to you and say that sometimes that is a hard pill to swallow. It is a very, very hard pill to swallow sometimes. But the only thing that I can do is keep making the content that I make that I think attempts to highlight as many different experiences as possible. I could only continue to talk about my experience. I, I can't, that's all I can do. That's all I can do. I can't force anybody to do anything. And I don't have expectations for anybody to do anything anymore. I think it's just at this point where like, I know what role that I need to play and I know how I need to hold myself accountable. And that's how I continue to function. And the people who want to engage and want to continue to learn will do so. And that's all that I can expect. And I can't continue to think like, you know, it's gonna be this mass thing where it's like, oh, you know, everybody's gonna be like, yeah, I want people to take something away from me whenever they engage with me or watch my content. And I'm not saying that people don't, but I think with me, when I create content, I want people to walk away knowing something that they didn't know or learn something about someone else's experience that they didn't know. Or I've piqued their interest in reading something about someone else's experience outside of their own. That way they're learning something new. And I don't think I have the power to change the world. I'm just one human. But I just hope that with what I do, I can foster some semblance of change and that some people will walk away, you know, with a little bit more love, a little bit more empathy, a little bit more understanding of people who may not be like them. 
but that is it y'all i know that was a super passionate video i probably didn't even stay on topic a lot but uh that's been weighing on my heart really honestly probably since about july i i didn't want to originally do this video i was going to refrain from it because i was like you know you've already done so many videos about you know black experience and a booktube community and what it's like and you know what your experience is like but i i needed to get that off my chest or else i just was never gonna let it go <laughs> i never was gonna let it go and i i just need it i just need it to and i think too there's a lot going on in my personal life <laughs> that's kind of the same thing where i've seen people who have been super woke and engaged and then they just fall off the bandwagon and it's hard so yeah but anyway y'all leave your comments down below please as always i know i always ask this and y'all always do a great job of doing this um please keep it respectful whether you agree or disagree with someone just you know it's all right to have different thoughts and opinions as long as you keep it classy just make sure you do that if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content from me click the subscribe button hit the bell for notifications interested in supporting this channel or follow me on social media all the links will be down in the description box below and i will be back with a another video soon.